There's a tricky problem on the 10.3 homework about Koch's snowflake. That's the figure you get by starting with a triangle and then putting little triangles on the sides whose bases are a third as long as the original triangle. So that length there is a third of that length. Then you iterate this. So you put tiny little triangles on each segment of the next triangle and make a figure like this and you continue. So the problem is asking you to find the perimeter and the area of this figure. And I recommend making a giant table, something like this, where you have the stage or level in the first column. So at stage zero, you just have the regular triangle. At stage one, you would have the triangle with the little pointy things here. And at stage two, you have the figure that I drew above. Now, the other information you might want to gather are things like this. The length of the littlest segments at that stage, the number of littlest segments, the total perimeter, that's one of the things you need to find out. Then you might also want the area of the littlest triangles at that stage, the number of littlest triangles, and the total area from the littlest triangles. And then you might want just the total area, which will be sort of from all the stages added up. OK, so let me do the first few uh, levels for you, and then you can see if you can generalize and finish the pattern. So um, the, the length of the little segments of if you have, this is your triangle here. It depends on the triangle side length. And different problems will have different numbers. So I'll just call it S. So the length of the little segments here is just S. And the number of little seg segments will just be 3 for the three sides of the triangle. So let's see the total perimeter at that 0 stage will be 3S. Uh, at stage 1, the length of the littlest segments is going to be 1 third of S because each of these little segments of the little triangle is a third the length of the total uh, side length of the original triangle. Um, so the number of little segments is going to be, well, in this case, it's going to be 12, which is 3 times 4. And so the total perimeter will be 1 third S times 3 times 4, because it's the number of little segments times the length of the little segments. OK, at the next stage, I've got teeny tiny little segments. And each one of those segments is a third as big as the previous segment. So it's going to be 1 third of 1 third s, or 1 third squared times s. Um, the number of little segments, well, every time I do this, I'm replacing my side length one segment with one, two, three, four segments, right? And the next stage, I replace that segment with one, two, three, four segments. So I'm multiplying the number of segments by four each time. Each, each segment is proliferating into four littler ones. So that means the number of little segments should be four times the previous one. So that's going to be three times four times four, or three times four squared here. Total perimeter will then be, uh, let's see, one third squared. S times 3 times 4 squared. And you can continue with stage 3, stage 4, and stage n. And then you can find the limit of the total perimeter once you find that pattern. Now let's work on to area. So the area of the littlest triangle, well, we've seen in class that the area of an equilateral triangle is square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. OK? Now the next stage, step that little triangle we've added is going to have a smaller area than the triangle it sits on. And if I draw a picture up here, remember that little triangle, its base is a third as long. So, so if I actually fill up one of my big triangles with the little triangles, um, so I can make, draw it like that, I'm getting a hexagon in the middle here. And that hexagon itself is going to be made up of six little triangles. So I'm going to have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little triangles of this size that would fit in a big triangle, which means the area of the littlest, the little one, 
is one ninth the area of the, the, the mama one, the big triangle. So in general, so this at this level one, each little triangle is going to have one ninth the area of the previous one. And at the next stage, the even littler triangle will be one ninth as big as the triangle, the previous size triangle. So that's going to be one ninth squared, square root of three over four s squared, and so on. Now to count up the number of little s triangles, well, there's just one in the first in that stage zero level, and there's going to be three at this stage, and there's going to be uh, well, at the next stage, I'm going to add a little triangle for each segment of my previous stage, right? Each segment is getting a little triangle on top of it. So I just have to count up the number of segments from the previous stage, which was 12, and that'll give me the number of triangles and that, I, that I'm adding. At the next stage, it's the number of segments at the previous stage, so 3 times 4 squared will be the number of littlest triangles, and so on. So if I want the total area just from the littlest triangles, I'm going to want to multiply the area of the littlest triangle by the number of little triangles. So that's 1 times square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. Here it's going to be 3 times 1 ninth square root of 3 over 4 s squared. Here it's 3 times 4 times 1 ninth squared square root of 3 over 4 s squared, and so on. But now when I want the total area, I'm going to have to add up all the stages, right? Because the total area is made up of the big triangle, then its little babies, then their little babies, and so on. So I'm going to have to add these up. So um, this is basically going to be... Uh, like sort of S0, right? The sum of the first one. And then this is going to be S1, which is uh, 1 times square root of 3 over 4 S squared plus 3 times 1 ninth square root of 3 over 4 S squared. And then this is going to be S2, which is like A0 plus A1 plus A2. Basically, the total area is going to be the sum of this column. It's an infinite sum. Um, but uh, so you can hopefully it's going to be a geometric series and you can add it up but you have to be a little careful because this term here is different from all of these terms it doesn't have the right factor of 4 in it it turns out if you look carefully but the rest of these should be a geometric so you just have to figure out the first term which is this one Well, so we're going to add up this separately so we'll add up just this part so this is the first term figure out what R equals add those all up and then you can add this piece at the end so I hope that helps you solve this problem. Tricky problem, but kind of a cool fractal application.